Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest, and welcome to May 9, 2024, a really interesting day on the markets. Uh, hopefully, uh, you have not been looking at the performance of your portfolio too closely today, because it looks like everything is down. I don't know why everything is down a fair bit today, because the American markets weren't down that much. In fact, uh, maybe one of the indices there was up. Now, I am starting this video or recording this video a little bit earlier than usual because I do have a fair bit to get through, including a plethora or plethora of announcements, intriguing announcements that were released. I do have a top five announcements of the day, and the company that has come in at number one had uh, no competition, to be honest with you. And in fact, this company that did come in at number one released their announcement at about midday, caught me off guard. Uh, and when I say caught off guard, I don't mean in a negative way. I, I mean in a really positive way. And I do expect or suspect the share price of this company is up a fair bit. Uh, the other four companies within the top five announcements of the day, I wanted a bit of a positive spin. Now, two of the companies released really bad announcements today. Their share price is down a fair bit. But the other two companies, apart from the number one, released an announcement that has seen their share price not decrease, which in trading, the sort of a day we've had today, whenever you see a share or company in your portfolio not down, that's a good thing. So I'll go through the top five announcements and then I'll also have a look at some of the announcement that did not make it in the top five because there was quite a few, about 13, that did not make it in the top five. And I want to discuss quite a few of those. Today is an important day. And I'll discuss personally, and I'll discuss why today is very important for me. I have made a fairly significant transition in how I invest. This was a long time coming, and eventually it has happened. And that's another reason why I wanted to start this video a little bit earlier. So I will discuss that before we have a look at what have, has happened on the ASX today. And then we'll have a look at the announcements. And we'll have a look at definitely one chart because I have bought a company today. I've sold a lot of companies today, but I bought one company today, and that's on the back of making me making this transition. And if I didn't make this transition, I wouldn't have bought this company, and I have a feeling it's already up when I bought it. Okay, so before we have a look at the ASX today, I'm just going to briefly discuss uh, this transition I have just talked about in regards to the way I'm investing. And this is or has been a long time coming. So I started trading... Um, the first trade I ever made was about 10 years ago. And it was a really successful trade. And that was really the light bulb moment for me when I realized that trading or using technical analysis can work if you know what you're doing. And after that, I started doing a little bit more research on technical analysis more and more over the last few years. I started testing, really testing technical analysis just after COVID-19. I made a few trades before that. But really after COVID-19, a lot of the trades I did make or investments I made was just based off technical analysis. And a lot of those trades worked. And since the start of July or the start of this particular financial year, I have been um, testing the performance of a technical analysis portfolio. I haven't done an update on that, but at this point in time, that particular portfolio is up about 58% compared to my other two portfolios, which are up between about 15 and 21%. Those two portfolios are on the back of two uh, more like fundamental type analysis or um, techniques. So for instance, a high quality portfolio is just looking for high quality companies, sort of like the traditional way of investing. Also have a small cap portfolio. So I'm looking for those companies who have the potential to become big cap companies or high quality companies in the future. And both of those portfolios are significantly underperforming uh, the technical analysis portfolio, but they're both outperforming the STW and performing around about uh, the NASDAQ ETF, which is the NDQ ETF on the ASX. Now, the other day I watched a video. Uh, this was through Self Wealth. And it was just a link that came up in my email. And I thought, why not watch this video in regards to this trader? And as I was watching it, a lot of things what he was talking about were making sense. He uses a different, I use candlesticks. He uses something else, which is okay with me. I just like candlesticks. And then he actually showed his portfolio. And the first thing that struck me was 
the way he invests or he trades was fairly similar to the way I want to trade with one difference. So a lot of the companies he holds, I actually do have in my technical analysis portfolio. But there's one big difference where I do take profits quite often, he doesn't. So a lot of his best performing companies are companies that I've completely either sold out or I've taken profits on. So we're talking about Doug Technology, uh, MA Offshore, which I, which I have traded three or four times in the past two years. Now, I bought MA Offshore well before he did. I bought Doug Technology well before he did. And I think there are a few other companies on that list as well. And I just looked at how he performed and I went, I'm on the right track here in how I am using technical analysis, but I just have to refine the way I uh, do things or make decisions. And also the selling process is something I have to refine as well. So yesterday I made the decision to change the way I invest because when I looked at my whole portfolio, I'm talking about every single holding I have, I realized only 20% of my portfolio is technical analysis driven. The other 70% is uh, high quality or small caps and 10% cash. And I want to reverse that. I want the majority of my investments in my technical um, analysis portfolio. So I'm talking about 75% and maybe 20% or so in high quality companies that are owned for the long term and maybe five to 10% in cash. So I started the process in this transformation, uh, whatever you want to call it, this uh uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it. I have no idea what to call it. And I started the process this morning and I have sold out a fair few of my holdings, positions in companies, and it was just based off the chart. So, so a lot of these small cap companies, even larger camp companies, where I don't see any reason to hold them right now, just based off the chart. And I have started that process and I've now built up my cash level to the point where I'm probably 40% cash, maybe 30 to 40% cash. and on the proceeds I've made selling all these companies, I did make one acquisition. And I'll talk about that acquisition uh, at the end of the video when we do a technical analysis update. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, so the light bulb lit up about 10 years ago. And after doing a lot of analysis, a lot of research, self-introspection, that sort of thing, it was May the 8th, 2024, when I've made a decision to transform the way I invest and make money. And I think I will benefit from this in the long run, just because the way I do use technical analysis is working at this point in time. And it has worked today like an absolute treat. And you'll be able to see that when I talk about the company that has come in as the top announcement of the day. I'm hoping the share price is up a fair bit. I do have a feeling it's up. I haven't had a look recently, but I sh it should be up a fair bit. Okay, so let's have a look at what has happened on the market today. So everything's down, and this is market index. What if this update? Does this update these little banners up the top? Update, yeah. So everything's down one percent, apart from all tech and resources. So mining hasn't had the worst day. So let's have a look, and it's just been going down. I don't like. So if you just look at this chart here, everything's been going down gradually during the day. That's typically a negative sign. So we haven't really seen a bounce at. Or so there is a lot of bearishness in the market today. I'm not sure why. Again, I'm not sure why because uh, the American markets weren't down. In fact, I'm giving it away what I just invested in if you have a look at this. So let's have a look. What the American markets weren't down all that much. So NASDAQ was down 0.04%. Dow Jones was actually up 0.44%. So there must be some reason why our market is down a fair bit. Uh, it could be the banks. A CBA did do a trading update today, which I wanted to talk about. And I'm pretty sure one of the other banks went ex-dividend. And if CBA down, is down 2%, we'll have a look at the uh, um, the ASX 2NE, whatever you call it, XT, XJ something. We'll have a look at how that has performed uh, in a second or so. So nine sectors down, two sectors up. And it looks like every single indice might be down for the day, but that's not the... Well, that does not cover all of them. You have to open up a little bit. Here it is. So there is actually two um, indices up, and that's energy and utilities. Uh, but the worst indice today is discretionary. That is not surprising based off some of the training updates we have seen today. In fact, a lot of the negative training updates were from discretionary companies. We're talking retail companies. 
We're talking about baby bunting. JB Hi-Fi released a negative trading update, although the share price is not down as much. Uh, Temple Webstar released a trading update and I did see their share price down a fair bit. Super Retail released a trading update last night and their share price is down. And that's all I have on the list. So it's not surprising to see the discretionary down. Banks down 2.3%. Not surprising. CBA released a trading update. It was negative. And I think the share price isn't as down as much as it should be just because of retail investors just being absolutely obsessed with banks. And I think another company, Westpac, might have gone ex-dividend. So financials down, uh, 200 financials ex REITs, but REITs are down, real estate's down, healthcare down, ASX 20. So let's have a look at the ASX, ASX 20 today just to see if any company's up. Is any company up? Four companies are up in the ASX 20. So hopefully you have hold it or are holding those companies. So let's have a look at the worst performing companies. So Westpac must have gone ex-dividend today. It's down 5.6%. So let's just see if that is true. I'm assuming it is. Ex-dividend 9th of May. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, ex-dividend 9th of May. Uh, and this is another reason why I would never invest in banks. Dividends are still not as high as they were between 2014 and 2019. You might say they're rising, but they're rising on the back of non-growth, zero growth in the companies. And I think the reason why dividends are rising is because the managers are a little bit concerned that if they either drop dividends or keep dividends the same level, that that could be harmful to the share price performance and performance to the company um, in terms of um, market perception or retail investor perception, and their jobs might be in trouble. I might be a little bit cynical there, but I don't know why they're raising in uh, their dividends when the companies are not performing. Uh, where's Farmers down, which is interesting. Share price is in a beautiful uptrend. Goodman down after a trading a positive, in fact, a profit upgrade yesterday. So you can buy Goodman Group right now at a lower price than before their profit upgrade. I think the market priced that in. I talked about that yesterday. CBA down. I'm surprised it's not down by more. It was a negative trade. There's no way you could say it was not negative. And ANZ Bank, Australia Bank, or NAB down as well. Okay, so what companies have performed well? So we know energy performed well today. So Woodside, you'd think, is up. What else is there? Some utilities up? Yeah, Woodside, Santos, I forgot about that. Macquarie Group and REA Group. Well, I'm not surprised REA Group. I will discuss that company because they also released a trading update and not surprised the share price of that company is up. Now, I was also going to look at the, that's the indices and the sectors. So we had two sectors up and that was energy and utilities. There we go. And yeah, discretionary is the worst performing sector. So a lot of um, commonality between sectors in this season. It's understandable. And that's probably on a want. Or is no, let's have a look at the best performing and worst performing companies today. And you'll be able to see some of the companies I will be talking about in today's video just by, by looking at the top gainers and um, worst performing companies. And the company that is coming in at number one is in the top five performing companies of the day. And that is a company called Integrator Research, up 42.5%. Now, this I believe is delayed. So let's see if the share price is, it's now up 45%. Not surprising. So, uh, I'll discuss integrated research in well towards the end of the video when I talk about the number one announcement of the day. The very fact the share price of this company is up 45% has really helped my portfolio, particularly in superhero. In fact, my superhero account is up simply because, because of integrated research. And I'll talk about why I bought some shares in this company quite a few weeks ago. And in fact, um, I've talked about doubling, not doubling down, but um. Averaging up in a position, I'm not sure if I should do that with integrated research because my holding in this company has now ballooned uh, to a fairly high level. But uh, I should think about that because I have made this transition to using technical analysis a little bit more or trusting my uh, use of technical analysis a little bit more. And this is a sort of situation where I use it and it usually is successful. And the share price is hanging tough today. Share price high was 59 and a half cents. It's still up at 58 cents. Doesn't mean we won't see selling in the last bit, last hour of trading, but um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Talk about integrated research. So not surprising that that company is on this particular list. Otherwise, looks like Alliance Nickel released something today. Share price up 117% on pretty good turnover. And they released an announcement called NI West granted major project status by Australian government. 
So this is an announcement that I completely miss. And this deserves a look at uh, as we go through the rest of the video. So AXN, a company I have never heard of, but a major project status by Australian government, you can't ignore that. So I want to discuss that uh, briefly later in the video. Otherwise, most of the other turnover is fairly low. Uh, so let's have a look by market cap and see if there's anything else I've missed. Liberty Financial, Strike Energy. So quite a few energy companies here and a few companies I've never heard of. Uh, SmartPay is a company I did sell. And I, I was surprised to see the share price had rallied and I sold on that rally. Otherwise, nothing else there. Article Group, which is interesting. That's the old um, red bubble. I'm not sure why the share price of that company is up 11.8%. Not sure at all. Okay, so let's have a look at the top losers. You'll notice that two of the other companies that did make it into my, into my top five list were not on that particular list. But the share price of both these companies were up last time I looked at that, including REA Group. So let's have a look at the top losers. So coming in number three, Baby Bunting. And that did make it into my top five. Coming in at number four, we have Trajan Group. That also made it into my top five announcements of the day. Both of those companies released negative trading updates. Uh, so Baby Bunting Retail, Trajan Group, I forget what they do, but it's not really a company I've focused on in the past, but uh, the valuation of that company is now getting to uh, levels where I might pay attention to it. So is Baby Bunting. Market cap of 192 million, Trajan is 108.8 million. But both companies released a negative trading update. So did Ainsworth Game Technology, share price down 18.5%. That did not make it into my top five, but I should discuss that. And otherwise, nothing else there. So let's have a look by market cap. Temple of Webster, negative trading up. Well, I didn't really view it as a negative trading update, but the market's disagreeing with me. I did not see Smart Group release any announcement today. So maybe I completely missed that one. They had the AGM yesterday. So I'm going to look at the chart for that company because that company did come onto my radar quite a few months ago and maybe the uptrend has come up to an end. So I'm not sure what's caused the weakness there. Vulcan still 29 metal, step one, which is understandable. Vita Medical down after a good day yesterday. And now the other companies that I remember that uh, released an interesting announcement are on this list, which is understandable because some of these companies are fairly big and you won't see the share price drop or rise all that much. I'm looking at you, Super Retail Group, CBA, JB Hi-Fi, what else is there? Um, that's about it of all the companies I want to discuss. All right, so let's have a look at the announcements of the day. What has been driving uh, the share prices? Or what has been driving the market? Why is the market down? Let's start with CBA, which was the first one of the first announcements of the day. Share price down about 2%. I had a look at this announcement or this trading update, and I just went, it's negative. There is no reason why anyone should be buying CBA now. Uh, everything's down. Uh, so trading update, trying to... Uh, talk positive, I suppose, in management. We actually go to the website. It was all about customer relationships and that sort of thing, how they're strengthening that. Um, it sort of reminds me of 2016 when all mining companies were talking about health and that sort of thing. So if you look at their results, uh, the first 10 pages were about health, how no one died in their mines, and then they go into financial results, which is understandable because back in 2016, most mining companies had absolutely disastrous financial results. That was sort of the bottom of the mining cycle, in fact. Here we go. This is from Livewire, talking about the mining cycle, something like that. Um, commodity cycle since 1805. So peaks, uh, and we're just coming out of the trough. And that trough was 2016. So the bottom, uh, the current depression. And now we're coming out. Anyway, so I wasn't going to show you that. But yeah, 2016 was the bottom. Have a look at the BHP share price. That's a good proxy, even though it's uh, correlated to iron ore. Have a look at BAP share price, and you'll notice there was a big dip in 2016. Here it is. There's a dip. The dip was reached in January 2016. So really 2015 into 2016. That was a time to think about buying BHP. Otherwise, the chart looks actually quite good. Uh, anyway, so anyway, so the very fact that when I went to the website, had a look at the announcement of how they performed, and I just talked about customer relationships, and that was the main thing. I went, uh, these, these results aren't going to be 
any good. I did see someone say cash uh, profit down 7%. I did not see 7% anywhere here. Uh, so profit or cash profit down 3% versus half year, first half year, 24 quarter average, which is a really way to do it, really weird way to do it. You take the first half and that's you average it over two quarters. It's really weird. And 5% down from the third quarter, 2023. So that's the previous corresponding period. So go through uh, CBA's uh, results. There's a lot of stuff here they talk about, which I just really glossed over. But everything I saw here, in fact, there's a, uh, I'm trying to see if I can remember where it was. Yeah, here it is. This is the appendix, key financials reconciliation. Everything's down except expenses. Expenses up, uh, everything else is down. But that's the complete opposite you want. You want expenses down and everything up. So operating income down, operating performance down. Loan impairment expense. I suppose loan impairment expense. Now that says down, but it's actually risen and reported impact from continuing operations down. Uh, so not a positive day for CBA. And still, I will say that still the uh, the P ratio of CBA is still at, at elevated levels. Uh, and we have seen a run in CBA share price from $96 to about $120 and still way overvalued, in my opinion. Uh, the banks, particularly when the profits are falling, uh, CBA has a P ratio of above 20. Uh, the P ratio of Alphabet is about 25. What would you rather buy? A company that has the potential to grow significantly in the next five to 10 years in Alphabet or CBA, which won't grow at all in the next five to 10 years. The, C the CEO has actually said that. They don't think they're going to grow much in the next five to 10 years, even longer, and an in increasing in amount of competition. And that competition is only going to increase even further unless we have a significant recession and most of that competition goes bankrupt. That's when I might think about buying CBA when we do go through a significant recession and the share price falls to maybe $50, $60. I would think about buying CBA at those prices. Okay, that's CBA. Now, last night, I'm just going to erase it from my list. So last night, a company called Super Retail Group released a trading update. I was interested to see how the market reacted today. So down 5.7%. Uh, and the trading update, I sometimes can't read how the market is going to react because I have no expectations at all with these uh, updates. And so I just want to see how the market reacts. Uh, and so we have like-for-like -like sales and total sales for weeks 1 to 43. Uh, and at this point in time, if you look at the total sales up for all stores, so if you don't know Super Retail Group, they own Super Cheap Rate Auto, Rebel, BCF, which is boating, camping, fishing, and Mac Pack. I think Mac Pack is similar to, it's either similar to BCF or similar to Kathmandu. I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, because it's in New Zealand, mostly New Zealand. But anyway, so total sales down. For a rebel, but up for the other the other three, but that includes stores that have opened. If you look for like for like sales, are down for rebel and BCF, but positive for super cheap and Mac Pack. So the question I had was, well, this might have beaten the market expectations. Maybe the market was thinking uh, that the sales or like for like sales will be down. Uh, so just based off the market reaction, uh, the market was a little bit disappointed, but some of the negativity in the market today could have driven the share price down by 5.7%. Because the share price opened at 13.28, got to a high of 13.46, which is still well above where it is now. So only down about 2%. So let's have a look at the chart. And this is really important. This is what I'm going to do more and more. So sometimes a chart doesn't drive my decision making, but charting and technical class will drive my decision making way more from now on, particularly in non quality companies. Now, is Super Retail Group a non-quality company? I don't know. But the chart looks really ugly. It has really turned negative in the past few months. Share price got as high as $17 back in February. Now it's $13. So share price has dropped about 25%. Now, if you think this is a high quality company, maybe there is value at these levels. That's when you have to do like a P ratio is 11.96, which does seem low. But if we do see significant decrease in retail, uh, and that's maybe what the market is fearing right now. Uh, there's potential that super retail group share price has a lot to fall. And this just looks really bearish. Now, it looked really bearish back in, well, sort of this time last year. You can see it going down. Sort of looked bearish, sort of bearish here. 
Uh, and so maybe you want to look at the weekly chart. So if you look at the weekly chart, you get a different perspective. But over the past, this goes back almost 10 years, uh, not much trend. So a very slight increase in share price over the past 10 years. So maybe there is value in Super Retail Group right now. But this sort of company, I want to see really good value. I want to see, uh, you know, extreme value, maybe not extreme value. But the other thing I want to see is a trend, share price trend. So uh, I'd probably only trade Super Retail Group um, at this point in time. That's just me. That's me and my new philosophy. I'd only trade at this company. At this point in time, definitely not a possible trade for me. Okay, let's have a look at TPW. Temple and Webster. This was another one where I thought, well, I'm not sure how the market's going to react. And obviously, share price down 15%. The market didn't like the trading update. Now, on first glance, I didn't think it was that negative, but that's the difference between me and the market. In fact, they mentioned here trading has remained strong, so the language was positive over the first half with sales up 30% from previous corresponding period. Growth continues to be driven by both repeat and first-time customers. Four-year EBITDA guidance range of between 1% and 3% EBITDA reiterated. So not a profit downgrade, sort of like a reiteration of their previous guidance. Uh, so maybe there's some other wording here that got the market a little bit concerned. I haven't gone that too in-depth in it. And yeah, so no nice tables there. But the main thing here is how the market has responded, and it's down. So this is after a period where they did release a few positive announcements where the market did react positively to those announcements. So maybe this is a shift in sentiment for Templar Webster, but let's not have a look at the weekly. Let's have a look at the daily chart. So the share price was in a beautiful uptrend. And this is another case where I saw the uptrend developing. And because I wasn't sure about this company, I decided not to play the technical analysis side of the possible trade. So this was here back in November last year. There was a nice little breakout, positive announcement from the company. Would have been the AGM maybe. Share price rose 14.4% on the day. And I could have bought it the next few days at maybe $8 and ridden all the way up to over $12. I might have sold it today if I did hold that position because of what happened on the market today and the share price of Templar Webster. And the share price right now is at an important level. Why is it important? It's low as we saw, or Temple Webster saw back in 19th of April, which is not that long ago. So you can just see the rally in the share price of Temple Webster the last four trading days. It's gone up 5%, 2.5, 2.8, .5, 2 and 2.3% in four consecutive days. And now it's retraced back to those levels. Not high volume, that's also important. So I don't think, even though share price is down a fair bit, I don't think the market is panicking when it comes to this company. And the other thing to note here, remember I said I wasn't sure about how the market was going to react? Share price actually opened up at uh, on open. Yeah, so the share price yesterday closed at 12.62. And today the share price of this company opened at 12.67 and went to a high of 12.71. So let's have a look at that one minute chart. Yeah, so the first two minutes are fairly volatile trading. In fact, the high was in that first minute. And even in that second minute, there was a lot of volatility. And then the bulls or the bears won. Uh, they really started winning at around about 10.30 a.m. So it's really interesting. There was a fight between the bears and the bulls. And all of a sudden, the bears had um, taken control of the bulls. And that's why we've seen the share price drop. It's really interesting, the trading here, between 11.50 and about 12.20. Share prices went sideways for about 30 minutes. Was everyone at lunch? It's around lunchtime. And the share price just keeps going down. A little, some big bot selling right here at 255. Share price dropped 1.4% in one minute. I would say that is just a dump on market, just based off that one minute candlestick. All right, so it's Templar Webster. I forgot to erase. So Super Retail Group, Templar Webster. I also had Judo Capital. Judo Capital released um, an announcement, but share price flat. So I probably don't want to talk about that, but we can have a look at the chart, a very quick look at Judo Capital's chart. I am trading this company right now, so I'm very happy the share price has remained steady 
and the chart's still in a nice little uptrend. So no reason for me to get out of Judo Capital right now. And the other one was the National Weather Service. Now, I'm only kidding. It has exactly the same initials as the National Weather Service in America. News Corp. Uh, down 3.8%. Now, funny enough, whenever you see News Corp release uh, sort of like an update or any sort of results, you also know that REA Group is also going to release results because they're sort of interlinked because News Corp owns a fair bit of REA Group. And that's exactly what has happened. But I'll talk about REA, REA Group in a second. Let's have a look, quick look at the chart for National Weather Service or News Corp. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Also trade on the NASDAQ. And see, that's an, this is another instance when I saw this developing uptrend, this breakout occurred on the 15th of May, 2023. So we are talking about one year ago. I saw that. I went, oh, maybe not. It's, it's News Corp. Why would I want to buy that? But look what the share price did. I've got to leave my bias in regards to companies out of my decision making. That's something else I've got to learn. So I could have bought this company at $28. I could have made 50%. Share price went from 28 to high of $42. And the question is, when would I have sold? I probably would have sold somewhere in here because the chart started to look fairly bearish back about a month ago. So I could have still made about 40% on this company, which I don't think is a high quality company. All right, so that's RE, not REA Group. Uh, but in terms of, no, let's not get to REA Group just yet. SSR Mining which is a gold mining company, fairly big gold mining company, share price is down 8%. They released their first quarter results. Now, they do have that mine in Turkey that there was some problems. What happened? There was some sort of collapse, and I'm pretty sure that mine is down. So the numbers were pretty bad uh, in the market. Even though they were pretty bad, I thought maybe the market might overlook it, but uh, the market said, nah, these results are pretty bad. Would I trade SSR mining? So I did have this on my watch list because I was thinking there is a possible sign of a turnaround, but still too much negative sentiment in this company. And today has reinforced that negative sentiment uh, with SSR mining. And is there any value in this company? I don't know. But I'm going to say well clear of SSR mining just now. Even before that mining disaster, that was back in February, share price was in a downtrend. I'm pretty sure that was when they had the disaster. Maybe it was back here in November. Anyway, so no reason to even think about buying SSR mining right now, unless unless you think there's value in the company, unless you've done a lot of research on SSR mining and you think the company is significantly undervalued. I have not done that. I don't know that. But just based off the chart, staying well clear. Company I do own, and I did a video a few years ago on whether I thought REA Group was too expensive. And then I sold out of REA Group. Then I bought back in at a much lower price. So that is one trade I have done. Um, and I was very fearful of selling REA Group because I held it for about 10 years and I took profits. And then I, when I saw the share price had dropped a lot and I saw maybe the sentiment in the company was shifting, I decided just to go back in. And this is an instance where will I sell a company like this if I think it is overvalued? I have REA Group. I have WiseTech, uh, ProMedicus. There's probably quite a few others. Uh, Ordinate, which I all, I think, are really overvalued or expensive, but I'm just a little bit wary about selling those companies because of the quality of all of them. Um, do I think the share price will continue to go up? No, not sure at all. And that's something I've got to figure out whether I should trade those sort of companies where I do think they are overvalued. Okay, so REA Group, up slightly, but that's good. When the overall market is down 1%, you don't mind uh, share price in fact, share price got to $190 today. It's 185 So it has been a little bit of selling. Uh, but when you look at their results, quarter third, third quarter results, nothing to complain about. I'm pretty sure I said that on a tweet. Uh, so three months ended 31st of March. Everything's up and up big. So revenue up 24%. Operating expenses up 18%. I'd love to see revenue up 24% and operating expenses only up 5%. That'd be awesome. Or maybe 1% or down. That'd be a bit more awesome. So when you see revenue up, by more than operating expenses, that's usually a good sign. And that's a pretty good sign that there's potential that profit is going to increase at a greater rate than revenue. And operating EBITDA up 30%, free cash flow up 33%. And there's another EBITDA here up 24%. And they also have nine months ending 31st of March. And again, 
everything's up, including free cash flow up 39%. So you can't complain about these results. And I don't think the market's complaining, but I think just a little bit of weakness in the overall market has seen a share price down, or instead of up a fair bit, is only up 0.1%. So let's have a look at the chart for REA Group. And I don't think you can complain about this chart. It's a beautiful chart. So I think I did that video when the share price was uh, back around about $160 in 2021. And then I bought back in somewhere down here. I can't remember exactly where I bought, but I did see some value in the company down here. And even though the share price now is higher than it was back in 2021, I'm just not willing to sell this company. However, P ratio, according to TradingView, is 86.72. And if you look at some of the tech companies in America, you can buy those at a much lower P ratio or much less, much lower valuation metric uh, number. And you know, I don't know, there is an argument those companies probably would be higher quality than REA Group, but uh, this is one of the best quality companies on the ASX, in my opinion. So I really don't want to trade it because if I sell, when I do think it's overvalued, it doesn't mean the market's going to sell off as well and the share price could continue going up. I don't know. Okay. So that's REA Group. The next one, next real tech company that released a negative trading update was JB Hi-Fi, another company I own uh, in my high quality portfolio. Another company I'm probably not all too willing to trade, even though this was a weak uh, update. So let's have a look at that update, sales update. So whenever a company releases any sort of announcement with update in it, sales update, market update, trading update, I am going to open it up. And we saw a plethora, uh, a, a slew of these sort of updates released today. They say May is confession season. So May is confession season, but also we are starting to see some companies release their results because May is um, like New Zealand companies release results in May and November. I'm pretty sure about that. And some other companies also. And one of the companies I will mention in today's video, in fact, the company that comes in number five, released a half year results today. So JB Hi Fi, sales update. All right. So we're looking at also, they talk about comparable and total. So I'm pretty sure comparable would be like for like. And we're looking at quarter three and year to date. Uh, so negative for the good guys, positive for JB Hi Fi New Zealand and flat JB Hi-Fi Australia. Uh, so the CEO says they're pleased with the results. So oh, so I think the results are okay. I don't expect much growth right now in these sort of companies, uh, particularly if they're not expanding their stores all that much. Um, the Visa should see their sales increase, but like for site sales decrease because they're expanding rapidly overseas. So the, the chart for JB Hi-Fi was looking really good. So a little bit of weakness today with the share price dropping. It possibly has found a little bit of support in the long-term moving average. So this is when value investors or the long-term long -term investors might see some value in this company. And we did have seen a bounce, a little bit of bounce right on the 150-day moving average. It's just coincidence, probably. Uh, so yeah, not willing to sell JP Hi-Fi at these levels, 57.31. In fact, I think there's probably good value in this company. P ratio, 14.4. Probably down a little bit today, but yeah, yeah, no, no reason to sell JB Hi-Fi. Another company I'm going to hold for the long term. I initially bought JB Hi-Fi back in 2012 when the share price was eight dollars. It was the most shorter company on the ASX at that point in time, and I should have just kept on holding, holding because I sold it when it doubled, just more than doubled, so maybe sixteen, eighteen dollars. Should have just kept on holding because it's a high quality company, and you can just see that by looking at the monthly chart. This is the sort of chart you want to see if you're investing in a company for the long term. You definitely see some dips, but overall, share price trends up. So I bought back here. Yeah, back here in 2012, share price dipped. In fact, the share price fell a fair bit from 2009 to 2012. It fell from $25 down to eight. So it decreased by 67%. And I still remember people saying, why would you be buying JB Hi-Fi? Uh, your most shorted company on the ASX. And Amazon's going to destroy this business. That did not happen. That was a shorting thesis back then. Amazon was going to destroy this company. And I should have just kept on holding. It was a beautiful chart. Okay, so that's JB Hi-Fi. Okay, so 
Another company that released a negative trading update today was uh, AGI, which is Ainsworth Game Technology, down 16.3%. I actually also tweeted this one. And the reason I tweeted this one was just one of the reasons why their financial performance was lacking today. They've blamed it on Latin America. Can you believe that? Latin America. Uh, here it is. Uh, the company noted that the continued economic and political instabilities within Latin America, specifically Argentina and Mexico, is expected to result in reduced revenue in this region, blah, blah, blah. Funny enough, Mexico is considered North America, mm, not Central America, North America, and they actually do mention North America. North America, the company's largest market by revenue, uh, continues to demonstrate positive indicators, yet Mexico technically is part of North America. I did not realize that until last week when I would probably think Mexico as Central America, but no, it's considered North America. Um, in fact, if you just Google it, oh, they talk about those two brothers who died. Here we go. In, even in Wikipedia, they say it here. Uh, is a country in the southern portion of North America. Yeah, it surprised me too. I always thought of Mexico as uh, Latin America, not Latin America, uh, Central America. Anyway, something to learn. And um, yeah, just blaming on political and what was it uh, economic instabilities uh, in Argentina and Mexico. Uh, the share price of Ainsworth has fallen 16% today. So let's have a look at the chart. I did have this on my watch list a few months ago. You'll see, be able to see why. Uh, the share price was right on, was trying to break out at $1.40. That was a very important level for Ainsworth for some reason. Sort of the highs we saw back in 2021. And you can see how Ainsworth share price really struggled to get above that level, which is a psychological level, very important psychological level um, for this company. And it didn't. Over about a month period, it didn't get through. And then on the 29th of February, when the company released their results, share price dropped 17%. And that was the end. That I stopped following Ainsworth at that point in time. There was a nice little bounce, but those people, it was those investors who saw the share price at about $1.40 and then saw the share price drop to $1.12. Who thought, oh, there's value in this company now. It's down 20% from last week. Oh, I'm going to buy some shares in this company. Uh, dead cat bounce, if ever there was one. And now this negative trading update, share price down below $1, which is another important level. But if you just look at the daily chart, you can see the share price was just going sideways for about yeah, just on a year between November 2022 and November 2023 at these levels. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of support because there would have been a few shareholders who bought in this zone, took the profits when the share price went on a rally, now have seen the share price drop to when they bought and think, oh, the share price is now at the levels I bought uh, last year. I might buy some shares. Um, but negative sentiment in the company, negative trading update, and wouldn't be surprised to see the share price fall from here. And what would be a support level? And this is, I would say there's a support level right here at about 96 cents because it seemed like when the share price fell to around about 95 cents or so uh, between November 22 and November 23, we saw some buying coming in. Otherwise, down here at about 80 cents, the lows we saw back in uh, the middle of 2022, that's another support level for Ainsworth. Would I consider buying this company right now? No, of course not. Negative training update. Maybe a bounce. I could play the bounce. Maybe, maybe. So it's Ainsworth. Okay. Now, a company I've never heard of. And I'm hoping the share price is up. A company called Wellnex. Who's held of this? Heard, who's had heard of this company? Wellnex, not me. Uh, I might have passed on this company. Might have. Yeah, yeah, it's up. It's up five point six percent. Was up a little bit more than that. It was up about twenty percent based off the high. So they released a business update. So remember, whenever I see a company release a uh, announcement with the word update in it. Well, not all the time because maybe the update is uh, acquisition update or maybe it's uh, some sort of non-financial update. I don't know. Uh, contract update. I don't know. But if it's a business update, market update, training update, I'm always going to have a look at it, even if it's a company I've never heard of, which is the case for Wellnex. So I opened up this announcement and I went, 
launch of additional Wakey Wakey products. You've got to get rid of that name. Change that name. Wakey Wakey. No, no, no. Anyway, so I opened up this announcement. I went, no, I've never heard of this company. What's going to be like? Okay. Wellnex achieves $2 million in branded sales in April. $2 million of branded sales in April. That's one month. That's interesting. Generating an operating profit of circa $350,000. Okay, that's in gross margins of 39.6% compared to 11.1%. The most important thing here is branded sales. So I'm assuming these owned brands, that's what I'm thinking they're talking about, have really good margins. That's what I'm thinking. So that's interesting just because of that. Now, otherwise, I have no idea what this company does. So I go to the about section. Here, I talked about the transformation of Weldex was part of the strategic plan implemented in 2023. This could be a turnaround story. A consumer healthcare business with a track record of, for developing licensing and marketing registered products and brands to customers in the growing healthcare market segment. And they don't talk about what they sell. So, and they also acquired Australian topical pain relief brand Pain Away. I've never heard of Pain Away either. Okay, so the, the next thing I always do in this case is have a look at some of the other announcements. So do, they do have an appendix 4C. And they've also dual listed on the London Stock Exchange, which is important. Not important, is interesting. Important, no. Interesting, yes. So this is a company's Appendix 4C. And based off the fact, very fact that I did not have a look at this, uh, it did not fill me with, okay, very close. This would have become very close onto my radar because even though the company was operating cash flow positive by 304000 they got that through uh, some other. I have no idea what other is, and I want to know what other is. But in the first nine months today, they were operating cash flow negative. Uh, and they made an acquisition. But this is a company I want to have a closer look. I still don't know what they sell. And if you don't know what they sell, probably the next thing to do is just go Google Wellnix. And they should have our brands here. Yes, our brands. I'll see if I recognize any of these brands. Nighty Night, change that name, please. You have a Wakey Wake in Nighty Night. It's just, mm, there's Wakey Wake. Oh, just don't like this. Uh, apparently they're in the stores in Coles and Woolies and Chemist Warehouse. They have four, maybe these are popular. So maybe I'm being a little bit unkind because of the name. The Iron Company, first gummy with slow release iron. That's interesting, Mr. Bright. Hydrogen peroxide free formula. Uh, they have quite a bit here. Anyway, so I'm going to do a little bit of research on Wellnex just because of this particular report. And their pennies for C was very close to making it onto my list just based off what I saw then, but didn't quite make it. Now let's have a look at the chart. Is the chart anything to get excited? Based off the selling during the day, I'd say no, the share price is in a downtrend or at least a consolidation period. So let's have a look at the chart for Wellnex. I don't even know how the, how, um, What's the value of this company? Let's have a look at the market cap. 24.5 million ordinary shares of 1.3 billion. Let's have a look at the chart. Yeah, this chart, not for me at all. Share price fell a lot. 18th of December fell 54.7%. 18th of December, what happened there? 18th of December, share price. Reinstatement to quotation. Completion of pain away acquisition and company update. So that's fairly negative and the sentiment has not shifted. This could have been the first step to, uh, towards a change in sentiment. And you can see why there's been a little bit of selling today. Share price was at high levels not that long ago and not big volume coming in. So maybe I'm spending a little bit more too much time on Wellnex, but definitely a company to put on my watch list. Wellnex. But again, for me to buy this company, I need to see a shift in sentiment and a change in trend in the share price. So that's well next. I won't talk about Clearview. They also, because I'm getting a little bit behind time, Clearview released a trading update, share price down 4.9%, but the chart still looks okay. So that's Clearview. Neurin Pharmaceuticals released a, a sort of an update from the sale of Debut. And at one point, the share price plummeted. So share price now $19.12. The low of the day was $17.97. So it looks like the market panicked a little bit. And a reason I think the market panicked a little bit with Neuron Pharmaceuticals 
is if you do have a look at the sales in this particular quarter, it was actually lower than the previous quarter. And I think the market uh, might have went, oh, what's this? So here it is. Debut net sales, 23 million, 67 million, 87 million. Current the year, 177 million. But this particular quarter was only 76 million. So down 11 million. Now they did have an explanation for it somewhere here. Uh, Net sales were negatively impacted by seasonal effects, including refills due to January action in December prior to holidays and reduced rent clinics days in January. In addition, discontinuations during quarter one were higher following the surge in new patient starts in the previous quarters. Now, this is not a trend. Even if you see net sales like this fall in one quarter, it's not a trend. There could be seasonality. So there is a chance that some investors have panicked when they saw that. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Neuron. This is a company I am owning for the long term. Because the share price is still in an uptrend. Yeah. And we have seen share price bounce today. So we can just say that, uh, yeah, around about $19 is a good support level for this company. Now, the share price has dropped a fair bit from the highs we saw back in December, but I'm not concerned about that because we have seen long periods of time when the share price of this company does absolutely nothing. And I bought back here, way back in December 2021. So I've been holding this company for, and I bought, was it $3? Share price $19. So I have no intention to selling my um, stake in this company just yet. But again, if I see, see weakness in the chart and uh, continue weakness in debut sales, maybe I will um, sell out my complete position in Neuron Pharmaceuticals. Another company that I am interested in is Light and Wonder. Not as a, as a high quality company, just as a trade. They release their earnings. Now, I did get a story about why this company lists on the ASX. Is because the people who run this company used to work with, uh, what's that other company? Uh, that um, gaming, not gaming company, the um, A, A, you don't have to go to my chart, A, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. To change all this aristocrat that's it aristocrat so i did hear that a lot of people uh who work for this company used to work for aristocrat uh so they did release their results and you notice the results page here is way less fanciful than any results you see from the asx one big difference i've found between the asx and american listed companies is uh just i don't like how they do their results over there I just don't like it. So revenue up, everything's up. Everything looks pretty good. The company is profitable. Free cash flow in the quarter of $93 million. Um, and the other thing I don't know about this company is, yeah, $93 million up to $74 million from the previous quarter. So gaming, side play, iGaming. So what I do probably a little bit more research on this company and just have a closer look at this particular result. But I'm in it just because of the chart. And we've had a couple of buy the dip situation with light and wonder. So this is the daily chart, a nice looking chart if you just look at the long term. So beautiful looking wave-like action, share price going up and down. I saw this little dip and I went, oh, I was paying attention here. And then this little dip just did not buy shares. Fun enough, really interesting training today. This is fairly similar to REA Group. Share price rallied on open and it has uh, closed. It is moving lower. So let's have a look at the one minute chart. Yeah. So initially the market loved it. Share price opened up, uh, would have opened up about 7% on open and has four, at one point fell all the way down to $148, which was lower than the previous day. So another instance where the market maybe overreacted on open and the share price has fallen during the rest of trading. Not big volume coming in, but another company I'll have to pay closer attention to, but the chart looks pretty good. Uh, next on the list we have, so that's Light and Wonder. The next on the list and the last company, yeah, the last company is AXN. The other five companies are 
companies that made it into my top five announcements of the day. So Alliance and Nickel up 105.7%. Uh, they just announced an amendment to ASX announcement. So this is in regards to NYWESTs and something to do with major project status. I more than likely would never react to this type of announcement. So there's no numbers at all in this. There's actually no numbers. And if there's no numbers at all, uh, project is expected to create approximately 600 jobs. I don't care how many jobs it's going to create. I don't care about that. In fact, I prefer uh, less jobs. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I, I find it really funny when some companies used to announce um, how many employees they had increased during the year. You know, like, I don't, that's actually a bad thing for me, um, that you're increasing your employees. And that's actually not a good sign if that's what you're focusing on. You know, I like to you focus on something else, not how many more employees you have on the books. Maybe I'm being unfair, but uh, people are expensive. That's why I like automation. Uh, anyway, AXN. So you might say, then who? What's everyone going to do for a job? Well, that's that's a good question. Anyway, this is a chart for Alliance Nickel. Not interested. Nice, huge volume coming in, but a lot of selling today. Share price got as high as ten cents. Share price now seven point two. And why was it selling when it got to ten cents? Why? Well, 10 cents is a very important level. First of all, it's an extremely important level, a psychological level for most investors. In fact, if I had shares in this company, I would have put my sell at 9.9 .9 cents. Uh, and then you can just see back here, share price just going sideways right on 10 cents for a long time. So many investors bought at 10 cents or just below or just above. They saw the opportunity to get out at 10 cents today. And that's why the share price has fallen. I have no interest in that, but uh, share price has rallied nice today. Okay, so let's get to the top five announcements of the day. And I said I was going to put a little bit of positive spin to it. So three of these companies had, in my opinion, a positive announcement. Doesn't mean the share price has risen. And the other two companies had a negative uh, announcement. And we've already discussed those. So coming in number five, we have Orica, which is a company I'm trading now. And the share price is up. That's good. They released a half-year results. My only complain, complaint about these half-year results is they did not see revenue increasing. I'll just focus on this little chart here. So half-year results. So revenue down 8.5%. So initially, that might cause a little bit, or that is a little bit of a red flag. I prefer to see revenue increasing through time. Now, that's not necessarily a bad sign that revenue in this particular half year has dropped. There could be reasons behind it. But even more importantly is what's happened to EBITDA, EBIT profit. If those have risen, that means margins in the company have improved and that can be quite important. Now, if you ask me what Orica does, I would not be able to tell you. So I'm just training this company without even knowing what the company does. Apart from they're in, they do some sort of mining services, maybe contracting, maybe electioneering and or engineering. Here it is. Uh, leading mining and infrastructure solutions provider from the production and supply of explosives. That's right, explosives. Blasting systems, mining chemicals, and geotechnical monitoring. So, yeah, so you can actually have no idea what a company does and still trade it. But anyway, I like to incorporate stuff like this into my trades. Another thing is, because the share price was in an uptrend, I think the market expected some good results. So again, back to results. So revenue down, but EBITDA up 10%. Total even up 9.6. Uh, net financing costs down 9%. That's very important as well. Uh, net profit before individually seen the big items up 9.5%. That's more important than the net profit after individually insignificant in items. Statutory profit up 175%. You have to pay attention to the other profit, not that one, because your solutions or your decision making can be swayed when you see profit up 175%. But anyway, overall, this was a pretty good result apart from revenue. But I am going to not ignore revenue decreasing, but I would uh, focus more on everything else in improving. So let's have a look at the chart for Orica. So this is another instance where I just saw the share price and the momentum and the sentiment shifting in the company. I went, this could be a trade. And yeah, share price is still an uptrend. Again, just like the other two companies, was it OREA Group? and Light and Wonder, 
the share price has seen a little bit of weakness today because, or a little bit of selling because of overall weakness in the market. But the share price did get to a high of about $18.70 today, which is a long-term high. Last time the share price was this high, in fact, we might have to look at the weekly chart. The last time the share price was at high was actually pre-COVID-19. So things are turning around for this company in the short term, but definitely not a long-term hold. Definitely not a quality company. The reason I say that, without even knowing the company, just look at the weekly chart. This goes back to 2010. There's no signs of a quality company in this particular chart. But daily chart looks pretty good. Still looks good. Still looks good. So that's coming in number five. We have Orica. Coming in at number four, we have the, oh no, we have REA Group. And the share price hopefully still up. Yep, still up 0.2%. Did I show you the results of this company already? I have a feeling I've already shown you the results. I have a bad feeling. I've already shown you the results of this company when I shouldn't have. Did I already feature this company? I have. So coming in number four, we have REA Group. And I've already talked about REA Group, so I don't have to talk about REA Group again. That's a misstep on my part. Uh, coming in number four, we have REA Group. Coming in number three, we have the first of the bad announcements. The negative trading update, baby bunting, share price down at 22.6%. Uh, and this is a negative trading update. There's no way you could say otherwise. Uh, let's have a look at it. So comparable saw sales growth down 7% in the first half. Second half to the end of April, down 7.7%. Year to date, down 7.4%. And just the language, also quite, I won't say negative, but not positive anyway. So the trend of improving comparable store sales that was observed in the period to, December, to February has softened over the last two trading months, reflecting the ongoing cost of living pressures being experienced by new parents with young families. And that all makes sense. What sort of people have mortgages and we'll be experiencing um, some cost of living pressures. It's the younger families. And to be honest with you, if I was just married in my 20s and I was thinking about having children, I'd say no, not now is not the time to have children at all. Uh, that would be just me. Uh, there is a time to have children. I don't think now is a time to have children. If you have a mortgage and inflation is still running hard, blah, blah, blah. Looks like they've also upgraded their NPAT. So as they mentioned here, Financial Year 24 Pro former NPAT now expected to be in the range of two to four million. I'm assuming that is lower than what they um, expressed earlier. Uh, but this is definitely a negative announcement. And is this a buy? No, well, not. of course it's not. I have traded this in the past. I did trade this back in August last year. You can see the share price rallied but it was not a long-term trade. It was just catching that short-term positive momentum because you see share price still in a downtrend and it's still right now in a downtrend. Uh, share price has not shown any signs of moving into an uptrend. Oh, it briefly showed glimpses back in March. You can see the share price on the 19th of March rent uh, rallied 14% and it went sideways for a few days. That was a possible trade, but it probably would have got out just after that if I did... Um, take a trade because on the 3rd of April, share price dropped 5.2%, and that was negative. And then now we got this. Now, interesting enough, share price is at the lows we saw back in February, but still well short of the lows we saw in June of last year. Uh, those lows were about $1.12. So still well away from those lows. So that's baby bunting. Coming in at number three, uh, top announcements of the day. Now, maybe baby bunting should have come in at number two, but I think this was way more negative. Coming in number two, we have Trajan. I can't tell you what this company does any either. Oh, down 19%. It was down a little bit more. Uh, share price got as low as 67 and a half cents. Uh, so let's have a look at their negative trading update. And this was negative. This was negative. Uh, and funnily enough, they first part of the title. Trajan, business growth in second half. Yes, we have seen growth. Oh, this is fantastic. However, expected to fall short of four-year guidance. That's the most important thing. doesn't matter there's growth. It's they're falling short of guidance. They were too bullish. They were too optimistic when they released their initial guidance. 
And I like management who are conservative whenever they release guidance because you just have no idea what's going to affect your performance uh, in the rest of the financial year. And obviously, they didn't um, think too hard, too long about what might cause any weakness. Uh, and they released this one. So net revenue. So they revised revenue and core and EBITDA, whatever that is, down. So revenue now expected to be about 9 to $6 million uh, worse than previously stated. So it's a revenue downgrade. And core and EBITDA, do they, do they actually say what N EBITDA is? No. What is Trajan? Global developer and manufacturer of analytical and life science products and devices. There you go. Uh, anyway, what is EBITDA? So we know EBITDA, but what's the N? I've never seen that before. I'm just going to Google it. Here it is. What does N EBITDA stand for? We've got a definition there. You don't say what it is. It just says N EBITDA. Ridiculous. And nothing there, nothing there. Net income excluding depreciation. This is from the SEC government. Let's have a look. Oh, wait there. There's one here from Hot Copper. No. Normalized. Normalized EBITDA. I hate that. Normalized. I, I suppose that's fair. You want to normalize it. It could have been way worse. So normalized EBITDA or poor normalized EBITDA. So the more words or the more stuff you have away from EBITDA makes it more likely to be manipulated. So core N or normalized EBITDA is more likely to be manipulated than just EBITDA, which is more likely to be manipulated than EBIT, which is more likely to be, EBIT to be uh, manipulated than earnings. And the further you go down, like the profit and loss statement, the more likely the numbers are to be manipulated. So the least likely number to be manipulated is revenue. Same thing is true for the cash flow statement. The thing most li unlikely to be manipulated is cash receipts. That's why I always have a look at revenue and cash receipts first. The least likely to be manipulated. The further you go down the balance sheet, no, the profit and loss statement, the further you go down the cash flow statement, the more likely the numbers are to be manipulated. You can manipulate. Uh, bigly. And anyway, core and normalized EBITDA are expected to be significantly lower. We're talking about from 22.3 million to now between 15.7 and 17.1 million. So this is a true profit downgrade. Just wish they used NPAT. Uh, so profit downgrade, revenue downgrade. Let's have a look at the chart. Would I have been in this before today? More likely, no. Another reason why technical analysis is really important. Because more than likely, if you do use technical analysis, you won't be in these situations. Very rarely do you see profit downgrades and the share price of a company is in an uptrend. I've only seen it once. And the share price of this company is in a well-defined downtrend. And in fact, leading up to this profit downgrade, the share price absolutely collapsed. Look at that. Why would you be in this company? Look at the, look at the chart. That's what I'm asking myself. And even though I'm asking myself that now, I had been in some of these companies with similar looking charts. And I'm asking myself, why did I keep those positions in those companies? Because I was thinking, well, maybe things will turn around. Maybe things will turn around in the future. Maybe the share price will go higher. And I just had that fear that if I sell now, the company will release something positive and the share price will go higher. But if the share price is in a downtrend like this, even if a company releases something positive, it's going to take a lot to shift sentiment and the trend in the share price. And they're more likely to release something negative like Trajan. Share price has dropped from a high of 460 to 73 cents. I'm saying the market cap now, this company now is below $100 million, maybe. Let's have a look. $111 million. Oh, okay. Coming in, top announcement of the day. We already know what it is. And that is integrated research. Have we seen a little bit of selling? No, we have not. In fact, we have seen continued buying. Uh, last time I showed you, share price was like 58 cents. Now it's 63 and a half cents. Share price up 58.75%. This is the type of announcement I'm looking for every single day. And we have that today. This is the most important announcement. What this announcement shows 
is what this company's management has been doing to try to turn around the business, the company is happening and the market is paying attention. The very fact we have not seen selling today, now the share price high was 67 cents, now it's 63 and a half cents. So a little bit of selling, but not a lot of selling means this is a really powerful announcement. The most powerful type of announcement you can get is a positive trending update. And by any definition, this is an extremely uh, positive sentiment. This is a phenomenal positive trading update from Integrated Research. Now, I have seen some people respond. I have done videos on this company in the past, and I have seen some people respond. This is a dog stop. It's an awful company. They're not going to turn things around. Mm, here we go. This is this is one of the most positive trading updates I've seen for a long time. So let's have a look. And just the wording, also the language. All right. So there's two things to look at, how they've performed so far and their expected numbers. So how are they performed so far uh, year to date? So total contract value up 8%, revenue up 11%, EBITDA up 93%. Financial year 24 guidance, TCV, revenue in EBITDA to materially exceed financial year 23 results. Now, if you just did your analysis of this company on, 23, on financial year 23 numbers, you could state and argue this company was undervalued, but they are now expected to significantly grow from 2023 to 2024. These are the numbers expected for 2024, and this is the growth. So last year, revenue was, or total contract value was 68.5 million. Now they expect that to be between 75 and 84 million. Revenue last year was 69.8 million. Now they're expecting that to be between 76 and 85 million. Margins have improved. The reason we know margins improved, EBITDA is expected to grow from 12.1 million to either between 18 and 25 million. There's a chance that EBITDA might double from last year to this year. Okay, right. so really impressive trading update. It's not surprising to see the market to react the way it has. Now, the markup of this company was extremely low, which is why I took a position in this company. And there's another reason I took a position in this company, which I'll show you by the chart. So now the markup is above $100 million. I bought when the markup of this company was about $50 million. Okay, so now let's have a look. Maybe it was $60 million. Let's have a look at the chart. And I'll show you why I bought. And this it sort of reminds me of Gentrack many years ago. So I bought it's 37 and a half cents. There we go. Now, I am really, my holding in this position now has uh, gone up a fair bit, not quite doubled, but I did put a fair bit in with this position. I was confident that there was going to be a pretty good turnaround, or I was confident there was a good chance of a turnaround with this company, just based off the, the hints this company or the management in this company was sort of uh, suggesting in previous updates. And we started to see that in the chart. We started to see the market think, whoa, we're getting close to a turnaround in this company. Now, there was an argument that was a little bit early, which I was with Gentrack. I was way too early with Gentrack back in 2020, 2021. It took a long time for that turnaround story to play out. I think there is a chance the turnaround story is playing out. Now, one of the reasons I also took a position at 37 half cents on the 4th of March was the volume. We saw some really good volume coming in towards the end of February into the start of March. Now, that's just after the company released the half-year results, and the half-year results were pretty good. But the market was still a little bit wary about this company. And then we saw the share price rally, and I bought in just on a little bit of breakout above 36 cents. Our share price went sideways. You can see I had a lot of time here, 37 cents. And um, now we have the really bullish one-day candlestick. Uh, massive volume coming. This is the definition of a turnaround. As you can see, some people might say there's a bit of resistance here because the highs we saw back in February 2023 were around these levels, 62 cents. So not surprising to see a little bit of selling right now uh, because the, that is a resistance level. But if we get above that level, which we're talking about a multi-year high for integrated research. So, and this is the one reason why my portfolio is up today because of this company. and. One thing I haven't really learned is position sizing. I took a fairly big position with this company because of this trade because I don't know why. I just thought there was it was really cheap, uh, really good value or potential really good value in this company. And one thing I have read, a little bit of research I've done is 
momentum trading or technical analysis trading works even better when you put valuation into the mix. So some research has been done on that. And that is why I'm thinking now, uh, not only just focusing on technical analysis, but also doing a bit of fundamental analysis behind the technical analysis play. And if you can combine the two, that should really benefit my performance in the long term. So hopefully that makes sense. Just combining technical analysis and fund fundamental analysis, particularly when you're talking about valuation. And that has worked wonderfully well with integrated research. A beautiful looking chart now. Would I buy, would I add to my position right now? Probably not, because my position is fairly big. If I see the share price go sideways and no selling, no significant dip, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Okay. And one, I'm going to show you one chart. So I've sold a fair few of my positions, so I'm going to have to update my portfolio here. I have sold out through a fair few positions, technical portfolio. None of my technical portfolio positions I have sold out, but I have added one position. That position is Volcan Energy. In fact, I bought it 373 today. 397. So it's, it's up. Okay. I was going to buy an open today with Vulcan. And this was just a simple breakout. And I, so this is not value at all. This is just a technical analysis. This is not, and I wouldn't have made this trade without going through this transition yesterday, this transformation yesterday. Uh, and this was just me looking at some potential breakouts. And I saw Vulcan Energy and went, this is it. And I was going to buy an open. Share price opened at $3 and it was 80 cents, 381. Within minutes, I saw the share price pull back. So I was paying a little bit of attention to the uh, ongoings of share price. Yeah, share price pulled back to as low as 370 within the first 10 minutes. I bought it 373. So that was the pullback I was looking for, intraday pullback I was looking for. And then, yeah, I'm already up. It's at 320. I'm already up 8% on this position, 7% on this position already. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing, trying to do these sort of trades, technical analysis trades. If it works out well, hold it for as long as possible. If it doesn't work out, just sell for a small loss, or maybe just a little loss. But, um, and that's the main. Uh, the main strategy of this particular style is you ride your winners as long as possible. You sell out of your losers and maybe you can be successful on 40 to 50% of your trades, but still you are going to be highly successful because you don't have any big losers in your portfolio. You just have massive big winners, very little, little losers. And most of those losers will be so far trades you've just made because if they don't go in your direction, you sell out and look for the next thing, the next company that looks like it might be breaking out. And that is my strategy moving forward. And um, so I'm really transforming how I invest. So I still have a high quality portfolio. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep two story stocks. And I already know what those two story stocks are going to be. And then most of the stuff I'm going to do is based off technical analysis. And Vulcan is the first trade I have made. Okay. I was going to show you another chart, SIQ. Uh, this one's interesting because this was on my watch list for a while because it was in an uptrend. Broke through this uh, well, the resistance level back in January, went all the way up to $11 uh, and then pulled back, went back to the, uh, re the new support level, bounced off. But you can see this high was lower than this high. That's a negative sign and then started going lower again. I'm not sure what has called the negative sentiment in this company in the last two weeks, but the share price has dropped a fair bit. On fairly weak volume, there was high volume on this day, though. Anyway, that's all I got. For, and I wouldn't, this is not a buy for me at this point. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually a little bit more negative. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. Uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, leave them in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, uh, leave, make sure you find someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.